ocala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Cookies! All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Gosh, when this book that we're about to talk about uh, first arrived, uh, everybody wanted to know about the last part of the subtitle. The title is Food and the City. Yeah. The, the <laughs> subtitle is New York's Professional Chefs, Restaurateurs, Line Cooks, Street Vendors, and purveyors talk about what they do and why they do it. Well, actually, not the last part, but the middle part. Street vendors. Everybody wants to know about the street vendors, yeah, right? Yeah, I love them. When you go, uh, when you watch TV and you see some of the celebrity chefs and um, you see them going into like, play, like they're traveling, like Anthony Bourdain does, mm-hmm. for example, they don't usually go to you know, name brand restaurants. They go to these little holes in the wall, right? Yes. So what, what does that tell you? The people who know how to find food find it in places that, like we have a lot of tourists here. They typically are going to go to Olive Garden or, or Red Lobster or something like oh, that, right? yeah. But they're not going to go to the little mom and pops that we all know because we've, we've lived here so long. Ina Yaloff has written this book. She's on the phone. Um, it's amazing. She's an historian. She's been writing books for more than 30 years on the diverse subjects of medicine, religion, science, and happiness. I wish I had more time, but we've got a very short interview. Uh, <laughs> she's a contributor to a lot of the big magazines, and her book is just amazing. I just love this book. As a, as a, I, I don't call myself a former New Yorker. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I just happen to live in Florida, <laughs> right? Ina Liel said she was a gator, by the way. Uh, good morning, Ina. How are you? I'm great, thanks. And how are you doing? Pretty good. You sound like you're a native New Yorker, though. You got that New York accent going. I know. I know. But I, I did go to the University of Florida, so go Gators. Did you Yay, really? Yay, good job. So so did you ex- did you explore this from a, like, are you a cook? Do you have that, uh, that chef background? Absolutely not. For, first of all, um, you see talk about background. I did not even come from a group of, of food people. In fact, um, my parents were not cooks, and um, I said that that, that if, if your idea of cooking is throwing a free frozen TV dinner into the oven, then that's how my parents cooked for me growing <laughs> up. I came to New York City, and I looked around. I'm a more of an investigative journalist, and I write about people. So I thought, what is going on in New York City that all of the people are doing that they're not doing everywhere else, and that is they are worshiping at the feet of the, of the new chefs in town, mm-hmm. and they are eating, and everywhere you go, people talk about food. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to know what goes on in the minds of the people who are providing the food that the New York people are eating? And that's what this book is about. Well, as a New Yorker, and I think you probably can relate to this, if you ask a friend of yours who lives there, where's the best place to get pizza? They will say, oh, let me show you the best place in the whole world. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many pizza places I've gone to that have the best pizza in the whole world. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. I think we're a little egocentric. <laughs> yeah, the place we go to is the best place in the whole world. Uh, so, so tell me, what, what, was there one part of this that was more fun for you? Uh, in do, in doing the book, was it the was it the high class restaurants that cost you know a hundred dollars for a hamburger, or was it the, the 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 what's the new thing now the truck uh, food trucks oh, yeah, the food trucks the food trucks um, you know what was the most fun for me to do was to just pick a person and that I mean finding the people was fun in itself and in some cases I followed my nose. And I and I followed. I found the halal guys who are the hottest uh, halal food truck in the city right now, um, by just coming off the subway and saying, "I smell some the the onions going." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lines around the block at Levain Bakery, which is this tiny little bakery, and I wanted to see why there were lines around the block, and then I decided to talk to the women who started the bakery and find out why they did it. So the fun was finding the people, and then getting in to have them agree to an interview in most cases everybody said yes but one of the hardest ones was the interview i did with paulette johnson who is the head of the new york city department of corrections food service at rikers island oh wow oh, no why, why did she give you a hard time it wasn't she that gave me a hard time. It was the mayor. Oh, oh! He didn't want why he didn't want you talking about the food that the prisoners they, are eating. They just didn't want to let anyone come into the the, the, uh. the prison, 
And so I figured out how to get myself in there. But I really wanted, the more they said no, of course, the more I wanted to go. And here's this woman who makes 47,000 meals every single day. Wow. And I wanted, yeah, in the biggest Whoa. kitchen in New York City. And, I mean, how are you going to write a book about what goes on behind the scenes in the New York City food culture without going to... That's amazing. Kitchen? Yeah. Wow. So her story was fantastic, and I, the fact that I was able to get it was amazing. Did you try any of her food? No. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, Funny you should mention that because, I mean, I have chefs in here and I have um, line cooks and all kinds of, of the, like the lock slicer from Zabar's. Nobody that I interviewed offered me anything to eat except the woman who makes pralines. <laughs> wow. <laughs> know, That's too funny. That's too funny. I found the fish market story intriguing. I mean, I've always liked fish markets and it's just, it, it just seems so magical up in New York. It's amazing. The new, you know, everybody knew about the Fulton Fish Market, but not too many people realized that it moved. And it moved to a place that is now the length and width of the Empire State Building lying down. And wow. I, yeah. So the P, this is out at Hunts Point, and I interviewed Bobby Weiss because I wanted to know, like you, I was interested in how that works. And, and since I had done an interview with... Sandy Ingber, who's the chef at the um, Grand Central Oyster Bar, and he talked about at 3 o'clock in the morning being at the fish, the Fulton Fish Market and buying his fish. So I said, I'll go up there and talk to these people and see what it's like to get up at 12 o'clock at night and work until 10 o'clock in the morning. And then, you know, what is their life like? So I found Bobby Weiss of Blue, of Blue Fish, uh, I'm sorry, Blue Ribbon Seafood, and I did an interview with him, and he told me all about it, and it's really interesting. It's a whole different world for people like him and like the guy I interviewed from Master Market, um, who's in the meat market also. They get up at, they, they go to work at 12 at night. Your, your, your journalism skills, your writing ability is what makes this book different than what I thought it would be. When I, when I first heard about the title, I thought for sure this was a book uh, similar to what I may have seen before, where you're focusing on one city and you're going to some of the, the hot eating places and just talking about them. You, you have approached it in such a beautiful, different way. And, and as I, I hope everybody who's not a New Yorker can appreciate it, but as a New Yorker, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But I have to ask you about Jesus Albino. Who is Jesus Albino? Hey, hey Jesus. Um, <laughs> well, see, when it's in print, I don't know. I don't know. It looks like Jesus to me. Yeah, it does. It looks like, um, and he corrected me, too. He said, it's Jesus. I said, okay. He, um, he is a line cook at the Four Seasons, and he's been doing the same thing. He works making salad. He has been making salad, standing in the same spot for 16 years. Oh, wow. One, yes. He, he's in my chapter <clears throat> that's called Taking the Heat, and it's, it's all the behind the, the, the kitchen door kind of things. So I said, why aren't you bored? And, aren't, you know, you're making the same thing every single day. And he started to explain to me why it's not boring. And people, you know, he, he said, you'd be surprised at what some people ask for and how they want you to change everything. And he said, it's this, the Four Seasons is one of the, the fanciest restaurants in New York City. And he said that he knows, even though he never sees the people that he's cooking for, mm -hmm. he knows they're out there. And he feels that they have, if by ordering his salad, they have picked him out to make the food for them. That's, uh, that, wow, that says a lot. He's like a rock star. He's got a name for a rock star. I think so. Jesus, uh, <laughs> the book is awesome. You've done a wonderful job. I wish we had more time to talk, but I know you've got other radio interviews to do. Can you give us a website uh, so we can learn more about the book and yes. about yourself? Yes, thank you. It's Ina Yaloff, I-N-A-Y-A-L-O-F dot com. That's F as in Frank, dot com. And that's my website. The book is Food and the City, and you can get it. Um, of course, on Amazon and in every bookstore. Um, but if you go to my website, you'll read all about it and see pictures of the people we just talked about. Mm. And um, I think you'll you'll 
you'll have as much fun reading about it as I had writing about it. And, and we just enjoyed talking to you. I was looking forward to this so so much. Uh, the only my only disappointment was it was a short interview. Ina, thank you so much. I, I can't wait to get back thank to New York you. and try some of the the food trucks that are out there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great right. to talk to you. Give my love to Gainesville. Uh, we will. We just did. We'll take a break. Be right back. The high Thursday, eighty nine to ninety three. Friday's high eighty eight at the coast, ninety four inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is...